Welcome to devlog number nine for a space game that my friend Rich and I are building along with some help and collaboration from other community members. If you guys want to follow this project, check out our Discord linked in the video description. And now I am excited to show you the sun. I had some fun playing around with different environments last week. Part of the reason for this is that Rich and I have decided to try and make a trailer and demo potentially for GDC. Rich is going to GDC and we've got like a few weeks to put all this together. So I was like, all right, let me just whip out some new environments to make the game look super cool. And um, I gotta say this one ain't too bad. Now, full disclosure, no, I did not figure out how to make an incredibly cool looking procedurally generated sun blueprint in Unreal Engine 5 last week. These types of complex procedural shaders can take a long time to figure out. This is part of a large Space Creator Pro asset pack that I've talked about in the past. And man, did they knock it out of the park with these sun effects. It's cool because it sort of teaches us a lot about some of the systems we're building right now, like our UI, for example, completely washes out with the sun in the background so we've got to figure out a way to dynamically change some of the UI elements now we've also made a lot of progress with some of the new targeting and damage systems let me get this pirate patrol ship here as you can see when I hit him with the railgun comes apart in a nice dynamic way not a finalized effect but something that certainly feels very satisfying at the moment now, I'm going to spawn a pirate ship about nine kilometers away, I want to say. I actually forget the numbers. And we've got the new PIP system working. So I can see him targeted in the upper left corner of the screen. He's firing missiles that are way out of range. Go railgun. There we go. So hit him with a railgun shot from about 9k out. And this is really exciting for me because although this is a very early version of what I want long range combat to be, it's already cool. I already like seeing a ship explode from that distance out and not necessarily having to see it right next to my ship in some sort of close quarter combat. I think we can make long range work well in this game. So that's like one of the, the bigger question marks for me about designing this game here was, is long range combat going to be cool and fun? I think it will be. Now, obviously, there's all kinds of nuances that we're adding to it. Lots of targeting and subsystem targeting and different ways of aiming and different weapons like missiles and other things that will be effective at long range. But just this very early version of it is still pretty cool. Now, I also started playing around with a black hole environment. For the record, I'm not particularly happy with the look of this yet, but just to give you an idea of some of the other environmental areas that I want to put into the game, I definitely think having some black hole adjacent levels and stuff where you're kind of dealing with weird physical anomalies and stuff would be really fun. Now on the back end, we're ramping up production on a couple of things. One of them is the sort of asteroid, I don't know if you want to call them bases, more like outposts to a degree, where pirates or people who have settled, they could be like asteroid farmers, asteroid miners, what have you, uh, will have these little established areas within levels and environments. And this will be to both give a sense of place and a little bit of history and a little bit of lore about what's going on in some of these level environments. Also just make it look really cool. But also some of them could be pirate faction bases or pirate hideouts and stuff like that. So we're even looking at potentially putting some weapons on some of them or certain areas might constitute like an asteroid city made up of a cluster of asteroids. And perhaps that's where a mission giver is or something like that. So I'm loving the idea of it, but I'm still a ways off before any of this stuff can really make it in game and look good. Now, Milkman, one of our community members who has volunteered to do some ship modeling for us, he's already built us a cool cargo ship, which I showed off a bit in one of the last devlogs. He's starting work on a pirate frigate. And so we're changing up the workflow a little bit this time where I've basically built this gray box sort of shape of how I want it to look, but I haven't really spent much time with the details at all. And then I throw it over to him and he's going to kind of flesh it out. And so far, this is kind of the progress that he's making with it. And I'm excited about this one. I think we need a little bit heavier of a pirate ship to deal with. That is beyond this pirate battle cruiser. I think that's the designation I'm going to give this ship. 
uh, that I'm also trying to work on a little bit on the side. I haven't made a huge amount of progress with this one, but this is going to be a much bigger ship, uh, kind of a potential boss ship for one of the levels that we're designing. So I'm excited to get this one in game too, but bigger ships take more time. And so it just is taking more time. Now, last week I showed off some very preliminary cargo looting type mechanics. They were super early, just kind of a preview of things to come. I decided to spend a little bit of time with some of our cargo containers. And so I picked two, I modeled out an ammo box and sort of put some textures on it. So this would be a way to say, rearm your PDC or your SeaWiz ammo. And then also a fuel tank, which again, you would loot if you need to restore your engine fuels, giving you some of that potent afterburner ability to help get out of uh, a sticky situation. And then quite literally, as I was making the devlog, Rich updated the game and he said, hey, check it out. I've got some of our tractor beam or rather magnet beam mechanics working a bit. And so as you get close to a container, you can then hold X on the controller currently and it'll start pulling the container in towards your cargo bay. Currently it just disappears when it gets there, but uh, we're gonna refine it a little bit, but that's kind of some of the basics on how looting's gonna work. A lot of people were suggesting having a little robot arm come out to grab cargo. That is something we've also discussed, but in terms of getting a demo up and running, having some sort of magnet option seems like the quicker option. So last week I was really thrilled with just how good the movement was feeling in the game. And I was showing off like dodging asteroids and maneuvering in between things. Uh, Rich did a lot of work to get that system up and running and make it look good. And I thought it would be nice if he explained some of the inner workings of the system. Getting ship controls and movement just right is going to be super important in this game because controlling the ship is what the player is going to be doing the majority of the time. When we first laid out the controls and the vision for this game, we had some keyboard controls. Then we decided we wanted to focus on the gamepad instead, but we translated those keyboard controls over to the gamepad. So the way it worked was if your ship was facing toward you, like facing toward the bottom of the screen and you pushed up on the thumbstick, the ship would start going toward you or down. It's a little bit confusing, hard to get used to, not intuitive. It can work over time if you build up the skill, but it just wasn't feeling right. We want it to be intuitive. So this week we reworked the controls to be what we called screen relative, or uh, if you move the thumbstick down, the ship goes down. Wherever you move the thumbstick, the ship goes in that direction or starts moving in that direction. We're finding that to be a lot more intuitive and a lot more fun. So instead of each individual RCS thruster physically affecting the ship's movement, um, it's a little bit reversed. The controller affects the ship's movement and the ship's movement affects the RCS visual effects. So last week we made a ton of progress on movement and it was really exciting and it sort of elevated my experience with the game a lot. This week, Rich has really made a lot of progress with the targeting system, which has sort of allowed me to visualize a little bit what some of the long range combat is gonna be like. And he's really focusing on targeting and now a bit of cargo. So I'm excited for next week because hopefully we'll be able to visualize even more game systems. There's still a lot of groundwork to be done in terms of building out the foundational tech, but I think every time we achieve a new visualization or ability to test, one of these systems that I wasn't sure if it was gonna be fun or work out, it ends up that it's actually quite fun and I'm enjoying it. So it's really good sign so far, happy with the project. I hope you guys are enjoying these dev vlogs. And again, if you wanna join a really cool community, you want more interaction with myself or Rich, to uh, see our progress in a little bit more real time or get answers to questions you might have, join our Discord. I'll leave a link to that in the video description. There's already quite a few people there and it's, uh, it's a fun community. It's where we've met all the people that we're collaborating with. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave it a like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. And up next, check out the very first devlog that we've done. I'll leave it right here. It sort of goes over some of the initial concept art and the concept for the game. As always, guys, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.